Hey guys, welcome to BSL Season 13 Hasu League semifinals between Masucci and White. This is the second match. White losing game one. Masucci really finding that timing, getting those Hydralisks up there and really popping in there. I like the decision to walk up the ramp rather than deal with the cannons of the natural expansion. Finishing the match from there. And I feel like that was a textbook example of how important scouting information is these days in PvZ and how difficult it is for Protoss to respond or know what your Zerg opponent is up to in the dark. You lose that early Corsair, you lose an early Probe, and it can cost you the game, just flat out. Especially at this level. So we'll see if Masuchi can capitalize on his clearly strong ZVP. White moving up. Placing a pile at the natural expansion. This is going to be on Aztec, by the way. Overlord floating towards that base first. See if Masuchi opts. Thus far, we've seen a lot of aggression out of him in pretty much all of his games, including the previous series against Master Ray. I am curious if he's going to opt for continued aggression. Probe wandering out in the front. Going to go ahead and plop that forge down. Looks like we are seeing an overpool this time for Masuchi. But being the being an inverted map ramp, I feel like this is one of those maps that plays very, very well for 973, or really any sort of mid-game Hydralisk potential. Masuchi moving out his drone scout. White scouting bottom right first, so going for the counterclockwise scouting pattern. So he's going to end up scouting Masuchi last. The Overlord now in position, which means that drone, yeah, can go ahead and come back home. Doesn't have to go... Do the long walk. First cannon morphing in, and Masuchi needs to be careful because he's moving that cannon pretty... This Overlord, I should say, pretty deep. Looks like he wants to try to float it over the cannon. I'm not sure where he wants to pocket it. Initial two Zerglings being produced. Natural expansion in production. And now that Probe Scout making its way across. So he, it looks like what he's going to do is, is he's just going to hover this Overlord over the gap so he can kind of get... <laughs> And I almost wonder if this is like early, like maybe I'm going to go for the 973 because I want to see what kind of blockage you've got on that ramp. Nexus warping in. There is an additional drone moving out potentially. Oh, turning around getting a little bit of additional damage. Battle! Trying to blockade to potentially grab a third hatchery. Gas is morphing. The Zergling's peeling off while that drone goes ahead to plant that. Natural expansion on the way. Gateway on the front. Assimilator. Also being grabbed by White. So everything I'm seeing indicates thus far. Yeah, definitely the potential for the 973. White going to go ahead and move up to that 3 o'clock location. And sees that hatchery there. So he recognizes the possibility as well. So now his work is keep this probe scout alive. So he can get a good look at the drone counts. At the natural, the main. Also see if he can get a good look at lair. Overlord walking into the main, sees the gas up, and the probe's mining. A cybernetic score warping in that back corner. Layer morphing. So it looks like upon that third base being scouted, he's going to opt for layer tech. The probe scooting back around, wants to try to move. There aren't Zerglings camped on that ramp, so the probe able to walk right in and able to see... Those units, the Zergling planting on the ramp behind this to make sure he's not able to get right back out. But I'm wondering if this is once again going to turn into that four hatch play. So much flexibility for Zerg in the early game these days with the meta. Zealot on the front, second Zealot being produced. Overlord trying to make its way out, recognizing that the Stargate is on the way. A few additional Zerglings being produced. And that probe sneak its way back out, wants to try to get a good look at the drone count at the natural expansion. Still not a lot of drone saturation at the third as well. It's going to be able to walk up and see that on top of everything else. And I think, yeah, this is probably going to turn into three hatch, or sorry, that four hatch play. The difficulty of four hatch play on this map is it is a lot more challenging to defend this third expansion because it is so wide open to zealot timings, particularly like that seven minute zealot timing with that plus one weapons. It looks like this is going to be something else though. Because we have a second gas being grabbed from white. Second cannon being put down preventatively. A couple Zerglings now making their way forward. Spire 
on the way. The Zealot's actually marching out a little bit ahead of time, so they might be able to get position at the 3 o'clock. Citadel of Adun before that initial Corsair. So White not respecting potential Mewes play, and it looks like that is going to be four hatcheries. The Zerglings were in position to go ahead and see that Zealot move out. Unfortunately, the Zealots were able to go for an end around and walk into that third. And I expect to see, I don't know, early High Templar, potentially early Dark Templar. Zealots now moving into that 3 o'clock. Second hatchery coming online. And this is a prime opportunity to get a number of drone kills. That poor drone. Zerglings being produced immediately. So White able to get some good economic disruption here. One drone down. The drone's completely exiting this 3 o'clock base. The Zerglings completely out of position to try to contend with this. The drone's now making an end around to try to draw the Zealots back to the Zergling line, but even with the Zerglings that are being produced, it's going to be challenging. Two drones down, three drones down, four drones down. This natural expansion completely flooded, or sorry, this third base completely flooded, and the Zealots are going to wander back and go ahead and plug the gap to be a massive annoyance behind this mineral line. Spire is finished. Scourge being produced initially. A, Cors a Corsair is out. Should be able to get plenty of scouting information. Cannon preventatively being planted. Three gateways behind this. Level 1 weapons along the way. The Zealots look like they were cleaned up behind all this. And Overlord being pecked away at. He needs to be careful with that. The Scourge making their way to the north. This was kind of the critical mistake from the previous match, although he's got more leeway this time and does take one hit there. Still wants to keep this alive. Yeah. So get a good look there. Get a good look. That Evolution Chamber is going to be a big indicator. Sees the fourth. Sees the Hydralisten. Ah, loses the Corsair there, though. The Scourge wandering around getting scouting information, seeing the gateways in White's main. The Zerglings now moving up and actually additional Scourge wandering in. Trying to, that's the other thing about these Scourges. They're just wonderful scouts as well. Basically their own version of Corsair, just with a little bit less health. The Zealots moving out once again with the Zerglings not on the front. Level 1 weapons isn't in place, but again, this is a huge area to defend. There's only two Hydralisks there. Another Zealot moving out. Do the Zerglings see it? The Zerglings do not see it once again. Those two cannons, plenty to defend that. And so this is once again going to slow down the economy at the 3 o'clock base. The Zealots moving in. The Hydralisks trying to get out of the way. They're not even getting shots off and getting pinned into a corner and obliterated. The Zealots feasting here. More Hydralisks produced. More Hydralisks coming from the north. The Zerglings flooding in as well. And so the Zealots getting a good engagement, got a lot of damage done, were able to disrupt mining, but on top of that, were able to get a good look at Masucci's sizable mid-game army. Zealots still able to get kills behind there, holding the line. High Templar out here, level 1 weapons just finishing, two probes blocking the line just in case, third cannon warping in, which is necessary. Fourth and fifth gateway. And Storm just about finishing. So these two High Templar are going to have Storms to work with, just in case there was a follow-up bust. But Masucci's economy definitely halted, and I think he wanted to go for kind of a counter-timing bust with all those Hydralists he's producing here in the mid-game. He's going to wait for level 1 weapons, now getting Lurker Tech. It's possible he's going to try to readjust into a contain. Masucci still can move these Lurkers forward. This is Aztec, after all. He can still move these Lurkers forward. Get Hydralis Lurker Contain out here, but he needs to position it before White gets those gets a sufficient amount of uh, Dragoons out and before he can really get that robotics facility online. Right now, the Hydralis camping out the 3 o'clock location defensively. Masuchi macroing a little bit behind this, but he is just building a large amount of units otherwise, pushing the Zerglings forward. The Zealots able to sneak through once again. Now pushing through that line... Are they going to get that High Templar? That would be a big pickoff. Looks like, no, they're just going to expend their lives. The Zealots able to sneak back through. Now the Zealots marching forward. The Overlord sees them as they're making their way out. But it looks like they're going to go ahead and walk up to that third. And that's kind of what I want to see out of White, actually, is just, yeah, have that army escort, grab that third base, play the game from there. White currently, with an economic lead, does have a good amount of High Templar out. If he can hold position on this ramp... In particular, and yeah, just make sure that those lurkers just have a hard time establishing that front line. 
and contained for situation. White should be, uh, can't talk all of a sudden. I think he'll be okay. White actually with the good supply lead. He is starting to set up. Masuchi not really responding, sending out some additional Scourge. Not really uh, maxing out Hatchery, still producing at Hydralisk, so I think he yeah, wants to go for more of a contained situation, but he's also grabbing a fourth base at the nine o'clock, or sorry, at the three o'clock location. So it looks like Masuchi feeling that maybe he missed some opportunities here, that his economy was halted enough. Instead, wanting to go ahead and move into a defensive stance here in the mid game, which is going to allow White to go ahead and macro up, get his Dragoons out, and I feel like these are the situations that Protoss like being in going into the late game. The critical thing then from here is it's just, yeah, keeping those upgrades flowing. He's got level 1 weapons versus level 1 spines. And th these are the times where you want to see that second forge up to make sure your army can hit and get it done. Pylon being wiped out because this is a blockade for these Dragoons. A bit of a miss micro moment. Or miss macro? Micro? I'm not sure what to call that. Does pylon placement count as micromanagement or macromanagement? What do you guys think? Anyway, point being a mistake. White moving out with a probe to do some scouting and maybe thinking of being aggressive. I actually would rather see him play uh, again defensively, at least until level level two weapons finishes. Also interesting going to level two weapons rather than the stereotypical level one armor. Maybe because of a lack of mutalisks. White putting himself in the red here briefly. Additional hatcheries being planted at the 9 o'clock location. The probe walking up. Not sure if he's going to be able to see it or not. He's going to see the Hydalisks at the very least. And you can look at Masuchi just kind of taking this outer ring in the upper right-hand corner. And potentially just wants to, yeah, macro up and get to Hive Tech, get his upgrade. Thing running. Drones being caught. Observer not in position. So needs to be careful. Now the Observer coming alongside, but a lot of damage has been done, and we've seen this time and time again. For Protoss in the mid-game, oh, Observer getting picked off to the north, which is going to end any potential harassment outside of some beautiful Psy Storms that White might be able to execute. But yeah, losing that Observer, he's going to go ahead and have to back out of this. But he was able to go ahead and grab this third without a lot of trouble. Still has the overall economic lead, sending out another scout. Some Hydralisks are moving across the map. Looks like he's also camping out outside this base to potentially go ahead and grab that move up to a fourth. So we're looking at a macro match. The Hydralisks trying to peel forward, just donating their lives, now getting surrounded. So Masuchi donating a Hydralisk grouping. Want to pick up a High Templar, do manage to pick up a High Templar, but I don't know that that was worth that many Hydralisks. And White playing the economic aggressive game. Going to go ahead and grab a base in the upper left. So this is going to be four bases versus four bases. Usually, if you're even, that puts Protoss ahead. Still looking... So a lot of gateways down behind this. I'm still looking for a second forge. Reaver is now being produced. We're going to see Reaver drop harass. Level, one, level three weapons being played. So White almost playing this like gateway man style. More Zerglings flooding forward, getting... Wiped out before they... Well, one Zergling managed to dash through. It is going to be able to spot the third, but I don't... Honestly, this probe pro could probably heads up, take it out. Queen's Nest finally being planted for Masuchi, so he's going to make his way towards Hive Deck. And yeah, that probe, in fact, is going to take him out. Battle probe! Not even taking damage. But decent saturation. Nice economy rolling for Masuchi. He's starting to fill in. I like that he's also got this vision planted across the map. But four base versus four base in a moment. White with a sizable army. Level three weapons not that far off from finishing. Versus just level two weapons once that happens. Engaging mid-map. No lurkers. So the observers don't really need to be protected. A decent size storm right there. And Musushi was trying to escort that drone it looked like. And instead he's getting boxed in. And I actually feel like White, all he has to do is, yeah, hold this middle ground. Continue to macro up. Pelt some Psy Storms. And almost play this like a, a TVZ at this stage. Yeah. Deny that additional base and just make sure he doesn't get surrounded. That's the other feature of Aztec is, is yeah, if you can kind of hold that middle ground, you don't 
have to worry about getting swarmed or surrounded. The Zealots bullying these Hydralists back, able to get right on top of them. The Hydralists evacuating to the north. The Observer overhead, there are some Mutalists being filtered in to potentially pick off those High Templar. And maybe go for a counterattack. They're going to sweep across to the north. There is an Archon to help deal with this. Additional cannons being planted. The Archon out of position to help defend, so it looks like a handful of probes could be killed here. Now the Archon in position, which is going to make it a little bit more challenging for these Mutalisks. Ooh, eating a big shot right there. Looks like that's going to end the harass. They got three kills. I don't know that that was worth the investment, however. But you can see White already planning for the long game. He's already got a robotic facility in position. Now building that shuttle. Did I miss a drop someplace? Where's that drop? The Mutalists will help deal with that, potentially, having that air airfield. But you can see, yeah, White going like, I'm going to turn this into a big, long game. His main mind out. Already has Reavers on the front to deal with any counterattack. And so, yeah, the game plan for him is delay everything in that bottom right-hand corner. Get this fourth base established. Get Reavers in position. You got to come to me and wipe it out. He's at 200 supply. Doesn't He's got level three weapons. Hasn't really filtered anything else out. He's going to have four bases up. Level 1 Carapace now online. But thus far, White's done pretty well in the exchanges. Masucci also at max supply. He's going to go, and this is like a pure macro PvZ match. Interior 12 being taken. That's very exposed and honestly could get wiped out fairly easily. Look at that surface area that has to be protected and how much size storm could blanket that, honestly. The critical thing, though, is Hive Tech is up. Ventral Sax is being upgraded. I'm not sure whether these Zerglings have Adrenal Upgrade or not, but White needs to be very careful that he doesn't get Pincer Attack. A couple Zerglings flooding through. Looks like they're going to be able to take out that Zealot out. They're not long for life, though, because it looks like the rest of this army dedicating. It feels like this is an over-dedication of an attack force. So a lot of this is going to come down to army positioning after this. Masucci with a slightly stronger economy. But White already setting up for the late game. And I think if White does make a decision to just sidestorm the bejesus out of this internal 12 o'clock location, he could have a lot of success. And again, treat his High Templar like science vessels. Just walk them up, drop a bunch of... Just blanket some size storm, walk back out. Get the bonus trades. Moving up to do that now. Size storm over that back line. More size storm over the right. Still has observers to go ahead and clean this up. And yeah, he can wipe out this base. Honestly, I would just, yeah, wipe it out back up. In fact, maybe even just keep the threat here. Keep dropping those size storms. Still needs to babysit that Observer to the north, though. That Observer does get picked off. That's going to end that attack. Hydralists now pursuing the rest of the Dragoons as they're exiting. Reinforcements trying to flood through to pincer and capture. Looks like they are going to be able to back out to this third. Archon's now in position as well. High Templar do not have enough size Storm to follow this up. Masucci with a big army now engaging this. The Archon's engaging. A size Storm to the... Right, and again, no observer group with this. I'm not sure this is a large enough cannon line and the Reavers aren't here, but blanketing Psystorm on the Hydralis to the right. Masucci still holds the overall supply lead. I feel like in those exchanges, however, White did a little bit better. He's got a big bank to work with. Ooh, this Dragoon's a little bit out of position. By a little bit out of position, I mean he's going to die. <laughs> The disadvantage for White, though, at this stage is he has given up control over the bottom right and basically the rest of this map. It looks like he's going to go ahead and try to sneak the left-hand side, work his way to a potential map split situation. No Reavers here. Are they going to slow walk? He still has these shuttles. I need to keep an eye on that. I'm wondering if this was just to distribute the Reavers at various locations, however. Here's the shuttle making its way. Lurker is out of position to help defend against this. So this could be a lot of drones that get obliterated here. Initial shots blowing up through the mineral line. This gets absolutely wiped out. Every last drone before there is a response from Masucci. And honestly, they can scoop up and proceed. However, Masucci looks like he wants to obliterate this base. A Reaver is here. 
There are High Templar with Psystorm, but not a lot of attack forces otherwise. This, honestly, is kind of the exchanges that White wants. Continuing to drop, finding that that base has been mined out. Looks like he's just going to leave it here. Did that shuttle get wiped out? I think the shuttle might have gotten picked off by some Scourge latently. But Masuchi continuing to barrel in. You can see he's just losing units. No Observer, though, to help against those Lurkers. And the Zealot's getting wiped out in the midst of it. And that might be the difference here. Two Lurkers getting picked off. One Lurker still standing. More Psystorm being dropped there to the north. And White, actually, with the, the lack of Observer, just obliterating those Zealots, making this less of a favorable exchange as it might have been. The Archon taken out, and now Masuchi pressing into this base. More Hydralisks wiping things out, so it looks like this base is going to be taken out. White not keeping up with his macro, falling behind in supply. The Dragoons trying to attack from the high ground. The Probe's backing out. Greater Spire was there in the background and some guardians now being morphed. Psystorms clearing out a lot to the low ground. And Masuchi looks like he has enough of economy and is just pulling the trigger and pressing through. Now this is a... Looks like those Reavers were cleaned up. Weren't able to get a lot accomplished. We're able to wipe things out, but it looks like... But Masuchi all of a sudden, supply lead, has some guardians to kind of abuse this back area. Looks like some Guardians have already cleared out the Mineral Lines up here. Missed that. Four Drone Kills while all the rest of that was happening. And Masuchi pouring on the pressure. Actually might want to reposition here. Yeah, he's going to go ahead and reposition. He also has Scourge to go ahead and pick off Observers. Not that there's Lurkers underneath. But White just not keeping up macro-wise despite having a sizable bank. So the Zealot's getting picked off. Everything else getting picked off. I mean, he's got enough gateways. Well, maybe he has, he has a lot of gateways behind this, but he's just not keeping up with the macro. Masuchi now pelting this with kind of an unusual lurker contain. He's also grabbing, or a lurker, guardian contain. Kind of pelting away at this. Now getting a lurker. Grabbing two additional bases as well to just cap it. And he's denied everything in the upper left hand quadrant. I shouldn't say quadrant because this is still mining. Now... White in a lot of trouble because his mains mined out, his naturals mined out. He's very thin at his third. And this base is not mining because of that Guardian in the air. And I haven't seen a Corsair out to help contend with any of these Guardians. Behind in supply. The upgrades are in Masuchi's favor. There was never a second forge. Guardian being picked off right there. But the rest of this attack force... Looks like it's being picked off. Both Scourge landing on the Observers. The Dragoon's trying to use the defensive structure to stay away from those Zerglings. But even, even if White is able to get a bit of his economy rolling again, he is boxed in. He needs to get an army and find another base. He does have a pylon here and a probe, so might be able to rescue himself in that regard. But he's basically no longer mining. Still getting a few minerals, but I'm not sure I could even count it. And Masuchi is effectively going for a front door seal. Masuchi's mains mined out. His natural expansions mined out. That third's mined out as well. But he's got additional bases that are coming online. So things shifting majorly. Gateway being opened up. I'm not sure this was the best timing for it, though. Hydro is pressing forward. I don't see... The Overlords are out of position to pick off that Observer... For Lurker support, nice Psy Storm over those Hydralisks. But more reinforcements flooding in. Masuchi's economy kicking right back up as he's starting to mine. At these expansions where White is just limping in the minerals. Still hasn't managed to reestablish. Looks like he's just been dropping Psy Storms to try to take care of those Guardians to the north. Hasn't been able to do so. Has plopped some cannons down to maybe establish that. Nothing but Dragoons. And Templar-based units now pushing out on the front. Scourge not able to land on that Observer. So it looks like White is going to be able to break out of his natural expansion. But he's eating a lot of Lurker Fire in the midst of this. Level 3 weapons, where did that come from? So I missed some forges here, clearly. Where were the forges? Because all of a sudden, 
White has, like I previously looked, he had level 3 weapons. All of a sudden, he has level 2 armor. And level 2 shields as well. Was that all off one forge somehow? That's magic. No, it, there's a second forge. Missed it here in the background. So, ignore what I said previously. It looks like we're going to see an overlord drop of Zerglings and Hydralisks. Potentially over this cannon line. I think they're going to find that, that bottom right. White starting to move out. Yeah, going to drop behind the lines here. Not sure how much they're going to get accomplished aside from being annoying, though. Is that going to draw that army back? Finally, trying to remine here. The Dragoon trying to push up to engage that Guardian. It doesn't look like Masuchi's going to engage that. So, But this drop, able to chew through this infrastructure. White, not reinforcing. So this might be a game-ending maneuver. And those Zerglings chew through those with Adrenal Upgrades. I thought he was going to back that army up and clear this out rapidly. Instead, he's committing with the army he's got, which means he's all in at this stage. All Masuchi has to do is to defend. Because Adrenal Upgraded Zerglings chew through these buildings extremely rapidly. Pincer attack coming from the south. The Dragoons exposed against Zerglings underneath. Psystorm going to clear that out. They might be able to take this interior base, but those bases in the bottom right and corner are still mining. And the Hydro is now pressing the rest of White's base back, and I think this is going to be GG. Yeah. So White trying to play a macro game. It looked like he had a moment to kind of reestablish and get in good position for it. However, Masuchi just out macroing him. Anyway, two games for Masuchi now over White. We will see what happens in game three. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.